Alola everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. Today we're starting things off a little bit different as we're here in the deep parts of the lush jungle next to the moss rock as you just saw because I noticed a lot of comments saying that I should actually evolve Darwin into Leafeon and so we're here in the lush jungle today to do just that. So as you can see Darwin is out here and actually battling a Steenie which is kind of a cool coincidence because of course I used Steenie in the original Pokemon Sun playthrough Rhonda so I decided to actually try to catch the Steenie just as a little callback to that and it just so happened that it gave us enough experience here for Darwin to get to level 25 and if you guys don't know Eevee is a Pokemon that's kind of special because it can evolve into like a billion different Pokemon and if you level it up by a Moss Rock it will actually turn into the grass type evolution which we're about to see so I'm not gonna spoil it go off into the light little Darwin and what might come back I guess we're about to find out, so... Here is Leafeon, our new team member. Just when you thought you could escape the intro, it suddenly hits you like a truck. Whatever that means. Anyway, we're back here on Route 8 because if you guys remember, there's a couple of things that we left unfinished here. Mostly I wanted to check up on our little Vulpix friend actually. You're here! It's great to have your help. It started eating the food we prepared and it's beginning to trust me too, thanks to you. Ah, oh, that's great. Now if only it could play outside without getting intimidated by the Team Skull bullies, what should we do? I'll protect it, don't worry little Vulpix, you are, I guess I am your protector. Good idea, I bet Vulpix will be much more comfortable with you around. Alright. Wait, that's really it? <laughs> I guess playing outside means like a loading screen, but yeah, it's white fur got all muddy. Aw, oh, that's not good. Did you have fun? Nice, I'm glad. At this rate, it won't be much longer Vulpix. We had a lot of fun today, so you should rest. There's more fun to be had tomorrow, what? We really have to come back again? Are you kidding me? Alright, well I think this person- oh, they actually wanted to see a Gumi, so never mind. I'm pretty sure though there's someone around here that wanted to see a Pessimian, and I actually managed to catch one while I was training up Darwin over in the lush jungle as you saw in the intro there, but uh, yeah, I guess we can show him a Pessimian. I really hope it doesn't have to be in our party. Thanks to the magic of editing though, we can do a little switcheroo and show this man the Pessimian he deserves. Oh, thank you! Look, son, it's Pessimian! Wow, Pessimian, yay! That was great, man! Daddy, why is this Pokemon called Pessimian? Well, that's because long ago, some Pessimian had a lot of apricot berries. Apricot? Is that really a berry? Pass him an apricot, they said. Someone overheard Passamon, and I guess that's what their name is. Wow, great, I get it! Wait, so the name is all a pun? Passamon? Pessimian? Okay, thank you mister, please take this. That was great. Hey, at least we got a rare candy for all our troubles, which is probably the best reward you can get in Pokemon games, but now that we've done all those side quests, that is enough delaying the inevitable because of course, today we are going to head off to Kony Kony City in the hopes of taking on the Kahuna Olivia and the final trial of Akala Island. So Charizard, fly you fool. And we're back in Hee Hee City, where I actually have to go put Pessimian back in the box. But thanks to the magic of editing, once again, it is no problem at all. And if you guys are excited for another episode, make sure to hit that like button. Thank you all for the patience. Once again, I know I am, like I said in the last episode, the most inconsistent Poketuber out there. But I'll explain where I was the last few days in just a second, because here we've got the sexy Kahuna. Oh, orange was it? Yeah, that's me. This cave is really something, you know. It's overflowing with these Pokemon called Diglett, and they're really getting out of hand. Mediocre trainers can't even get through. What? Diglets? Really? Let me see which crystals you've earned. Oh, look at you. Nice work. I see you've even passed Mallow's trial. It's about time you had some fun with me. The Diglett have settled down too. If you're as strong as you appear, you should be able to make it through this cave. At the other end, you'll find Kony Kony City. That's where my shop is. I'll see you there. Alright, looking forward to some fun with Olivia, except she's actually just standing here. 
I thought she just said she was gonna wait for us at the shop. All right, I don't know what's going on, but whoa, dudes, we've got a wild Pokemon already, and I'm gonna guess it's a little di- Oh, no, never mind, it's Zubat. Not really something I'm looking to catch, but there might be some other Pokemon in here that I guess are a little more interesting. Whether in battles or digging tunnels, Pokemon are incredible. That's right, my friend, and that's why I am hoping that we can find some pretty incredible Pokemon in here. Though, to be honest, I, I don't think we're gonna find anything other than Diglets and Zubats, but... Hey, at least this dude's got some interesting Pokemon for us, because here's Shieldon, which is definitely a fossil Pokemon. Uh, we were actually just last episode, I believe. You know what? Honestly, I can't remember that well because as you guys, as I was just mentioning, it's been a little bit since the last episode, um, and I'm not sure if it was literally last episode or the previous one, but we were at the fossil lab not too long ago, and in Kony Kony City, we actually can pick up some fossils and hopefully bring him back over to that guy uh, trying to make his own Jurassic Park, and Shieldon is definitely one of the Pokemon we can get from that. I think there's actually some other new fossils in this game as well. Uh, we saw Amora, I think a scientist had, and I'm pretty sure Tyrant, or yeah, I think that's what its name is. Um, the dragon and rock type from Pokemon X and Y is also in this game, which is really cool. I actually really like those two fossil Pokemon, so I don't know how the heck I knew that there would be an escape rope there. Well, I didn't know there would be an escape rope, but I guess I hit an item, but uh, here's another wild, wild Pokemon, and really? I don't know what I expected, I don't know why I'm expecting it to be something more exciting because eventually we're just gonna run into Diglett and I'm still gonna be disappointed, so anyway, uh, let's smash those rocks real quick and get ourselves a Firestone actually, that's pretty neat. Uh, I think we picked up the Waterstone not too long ago, so now only the Thunderstone is missing and here's... what? These Zubats, man, they might as well rename the cave at this point, or I guess the tunnel, because I think this place is called Diglett's Tunnel, not to be confused with Diglett Cave back in Kanto. Now I don't know which one is which, actually, but with Olivia in charge, we finally managed to make some headway against those Diglett. Oh hey, it's Satoros! <laughs> We're members of the Aether Foundation. We work to support Pokemon conservation. It seems like Team Skull was responsible for the Diglett in this cave getting so riled up and bringing them all up to the surface. Oh, Team Skull is this group of troublemakers, you see? They seem to delight in interfering with trainers and their Pokemon. Oh, we know all about Team Skull, don't worry, uh, Aether people. We're here to ensure that they return to their tunnels and let people pass through here without having to fight so many Pokemon. Some of the Diglett are still stuck on or near the surface, though, so be careful. You mean Zubats? Like, y'all cleared up the Diglets, that's for sure, because all I'm running into right now are Zubats. Like, for real, where are these Diglets that everyone keeps talking about? I guess we'll find out eventually, but oh boy, never mind. I guess we're about to find out now because... Gotta be kidding me. The worst part of it all is I keep being unable to run away with Nani, so she's at like half HP now, which isn't good, but work through brute force doesn't go well. I don't know what you mean by that. I guess it makes sense though, you know, you can't force your way through everything. Sometimes you gotta use that thinking brain of yours, you know? Whatever your name is, Backlav? It's a kind of weird name, but I'm pretty sure it's Backlav. I don't know why it reminds me of Aflac. And actually, when uh, Archon came out there, its cry kind of sounded like the Aflac duck, so that's pretty funny. But anyway, um, I don't know why I went for Headbutt here, because Archon, or Archon, or whatever, is actually a rock and flying type, so this is not gonna do too much. It actually did a lot more than I was expecting, though, but um, actually, another fossil Pokemon I've just realized. All the Pokemon in here so far, or at least the ones that these workers are using, are actually fossil Pokemon. Uh, this one, of course, being from Black and White. And yeah, I don't know. I feel like our team is actually really diverse so far. We've seen Pokemon from all sorts of generations in the game. And I guess our team as well kind of includes Pokemon from a lot of generations. Maybe not all of them so far because technically you can't do that. There's seven generations now, so you'd always be missing out on one. But it would be kind of cool to have at least one Pokemon from at least covering six of them, you know, on our team. Anyway, I don't know if I'm looking for hidden items at this point anymore. Uh, I guess my sixth sense is not working out as I thought, and I don't know why I'm even surprised anymore. Holy crap, you called a Golbat? How crazy are these Zubats out here, bro? Like, for real. Please run away. Oh my gosh, this is... This is too much right now. Nani's confused out here. You can't run away. Zubat's about to... Take us down! Oh gosh, that was really close! Please run away, please run away, please run away! Yes! That was way too close. 
which is why I am spraying the heck out of this repel, and this is not the way we want to go, but this actually gives me a chance to finally- No! Never mind, it's Team Skull! Just when things were starting to heat up, yo, I got surrounded by Diglett and beat up, yo! Yo, since when can Diglett you beat up? <laughs> they actually have that move? I'm so mad that now I want to beat up on some fools! Don't be mad, because you were the fool who was dumb enough to be here right now! Orange! Oh, how's it going, buddy? Ah, I was wondering who were playing around with me, and it's Team Skull. As always, you want some? That's how we say hello. Nice knowing you, punks. Oh, very threatening words coming out of your mouth. Almost as threatening as those hand gestures you got going on there. But as we know, Team Skull are kind of pushovers, and we do have How here to battle with us, which I feel like is a little bit, uh, not really unnecessary, but I guess excessive you know like do we really need how's help whoa did you see how my trainer was holding the pokeball there that was kind of cool i don't know why that was but it was cool anyway uh nani should definitely be able to handle little salandit over there probably ekans as well actually so oh man why do we both go for the same pokemon i just noticed that how has his own eevee actually so i wonder what eevee lucian he's gonna end up having i'm gonna be very disappointed if it's actually also a leafeon because I don't know, that would be kind of crazy. I think last time me and Hau had pretty similar teams um, in the original playthrough of Sun and Moon. Or at least I know that we both had a Alolan Raichu. I guess that's about it, but yeah, I definitely should have attacked Dekans. I wish we had a move that actually hit both Pokemon, but I don't know if Cubone actually learns Bulldoze or... I mean, it definitely learns Earthquake, but that's not going to happen for a while. Either way, the Bone Club is enough to take it down. And yeah, Team Skull, pushovers as always. Will our bones be laid bare? Yo! I don't know, we can't seem to shake it off! Mo! That's me. Yo, step off! Enough with the beating up, yo! We may not be trying to take over the world or nothing, but we're still hard as bone out here. Uh, don't know about that. See you on the flip side. I like that. Man, Orange, when I fight with you, it's like even my Pokemon feel more at ease. You really are some kind of trainer. That's it. I've just gotta give you something. Oh. Max Ether. Okay, at least it's not revives. He's not like looking down on us or something. It's pretty much like those Roto PP restores you can get from Roto Lotto. Oh, I seem to keep forgetting about that. And Rotom in general actually is looking a little sad down there in the bottom screen. Oh, never mind. Once we reach Kony Kony, we need to head to Olivia's shop. Okay, we'll do that in just a second, Rotom. But I actually feel like we missed a couple of things over here, as well as my hidden item Spidey Sense is tingling. Uh, that would have definitely been a Diglett there, actually, but, oh, wow, the Repel Wars off just in time to take on the final trainer here. Dig a hole? What do you think this is, Minecraft? <laughs> Get it? Because, yeah, I, I don't know, actually. Wasn't that a, a song back in the day, like the Yogg's Cast or something? They did that dig in a hole? Or am I thinking of something else? I don't know, but Nani, get out there and handle this Diglett. Finally, we get to see a Diglett in the Diglett's Tunnel or the Diglett's Cave or whatever this place is actually called. I don't know why I, I don't know its real name. Like, I'm literally confusing it with uh, the Diglett's Tunnel back in Kanto. I feel like this is the, the Diglett's Cave and that's the tunnel, like the original one is a tunnel, but I don't know. Like I said, I must be confusing it right now, but Diglett goes down, no problemo. And actually, now that the cutscenes are all over and this man has another Diglett on his team, finally I can talk about what's been going on. Uh, so you guys know that it's been a couple of days now since the last episode, and for those of you that don't know, my birthday may or may not be coming up, possibly tomorrow from the day this video comes out, so my friend has scheduled a little bit of karaoke fun for a while now and finally it happened this weekend so i took a little trip to cali over the weekend i guess as a little birthday present to myself or i guess early birthday present because like i said it's may or may not be the next day or not yet whoa did you see that the luscious hair up there in the corner that was crazy almost as crazy as oh my gosh it's finally a diglet what the heck Anyway, uh, yeah, my friend had scheduled some karaoke, like, almost a month ago already, so I couldn't miss out on it, and it was, like, the perfect little birthday opportunity, so, sorry again that I am the worst and keep not updating you guys on stuff, but I think I recorded a couple of vlog clips, and I am just so amazed at this thing, like, what the heck? I want to follow it to the ends of the tunnel, okay, let's, let's get out of here. And cheer up, Rotom, what is going on, buddy? There we go. Anyway, whoa! What is going on here? 
Oh, a trial-going trainer you are. Looker is my name. I travel the world and many lands do I visit for my own private reasons. Alola is a nice place and so very peaceful, most ideal for a vacancy. I was just in Coney Coney where I got a most unusual stone at Miss Olivia's shop. No one here is so terrible as to try to create a new world or liberate all Pokemon from their trainers. Yes, peaceful indeed. What is he talking about? I guess Lysander or uh, Team Galactic, right? Though concerns I have about those reported sightings of the infamous Pokemon Mafia. Wait, I don't think he's talking about Team Skull, right? Forgive me for keeping you. I'll give you this Thunderstone if you forgive my rudeness. I brought three without thinking. <laughs> what? I guess he's only giving us one of them though, which is very nice of him. Do you have a good adventure, my trial-going young trainer friend? It's almost like he knows us the way he's talking to us, like a trial-going trainer friend. Or maybe that's just how weird Looker is, but... Route 9 Police Station. Don't fight, don't meet anyone's eyes. Wait, what? There's literally a cop right here ready to fight, so I don't know what that sign is talking about. But how about a battle? This guy is a bored cop outside the station, just whoa, making a mad dash for it too. Officer Haruki, that's a pretty interesting name. I like the little stash going on with him there. And I also like his Pokemon. Herdier is not something you see every day, but it's definitely something that Nani can handle. Uh, but yeah, I guess now that I'm back, I don't actually plan on taking any more trips until I think around New Year's. I want to go and see my family, but uh, before I leave, I really want to try, or I'm going to try my hardest rather, to try to get a lot of videos pumped out and actually ready before I take my vacation. Um, because that's how I used to do things around here, you know? I actually used to be committed to making these videos and pumping them out not uh, a month after the game has already come out and we're on episode like... I think this is 15 or something, so I guess that's not terribly bad, but you guys know that things have been a lot slower than previous years uh, this year around, and I'm really hoping that 2018 I can actually bring it back. I know I keep making these promises, and actually a lot of people, or a couple of people, uh, seem to point out on Twitter that I keep making promises and not really delivering on them, and it's never my intention not to deliver, that's why I'm saying I'm the most inconsistent Poketuber, because... I don't know, I think this year overall has just been very different for me. Like, I feel like I've prioritized real life a little bit over YouTube, and that's not really the best thing ever, because as you guys know, YouTube has been with me, or I guess I've been doing YouTube for such a long time, and it hasn't always been my job, but for the last, like, six years almost, it has been my career, I guess you could say, and I really do enjoy making videos, it's just that I guess this year I've been prioritizing other stuff, like I said. So I'm definitely going to work harder in 2018 to try to bring more of a balance to things, you know, kind of like the Avatar. Gotta unite all the tribes and make YouTube videos while also uh, doing real life stuff, I guess. Uh, but anyway, duh duh! Wait, what the heck? Something wrong? Ditto! What the heck? I thought this man was a ditto for a second, but apparently... Wait, what? He is a ditto! What is happening right now? This is literally a wild ditto that I guess was disguising itself as a cop? That's kind of crazy, actually. I also don't think this is actually Darwin. Or wait, it actually is Darwin. Huh, that's crazy. Um, you guys can finally see the moves that Darwin learned upon leveling up, uh, because it actually, we got it at the perfect level, I feel like. Level 25, Eevee learned Takedown, and then as soon as it evolved, it learned Razor Leaf as well as Giga Drain. So I think that was basically the perfect level to evolve our little Eevee. And I really hope this Razor Leaf doesn't critical hit. Oh wait, never mind. It's not very effective now, so uh, definitely not going to take it down. It may take down itself though there with the takedown actually, but I think it's low enough HP now. So let's go for this Great Ball and hopefully get ourselves a Ditto because this is just crazy that we literally ran into a Ditto in the most unlikely of places, the police station. <laughs> and it was literally disguised as a cop, like... I don't think we've ever seen a Ditto disguised as a human in the actual Pokemon games. Pretty sure in the anime it's happened a couple of times, but yeah, I don't I don't think we've ever seen that in the game, so really cool stuff. Natural gaining some levels there as well as Darwin, I think. And of course, this little Ditto has got to get registered in the Pokedex. Look at how lonely it is. Just there on its own in that page. Anyway, uh, you guys know enough about Ditto, I'm sure. We all know what Ditto does and what it's all about, so... You're going to the PC, buddy! A Ditto disguises my partner! <laughs> Are the Ditto 5 responsible for this? The Ditto 5 love humans so much that they transform into them! They are very troublesome! They mean no harm, but they mess up people's relationships, so they're registered as wanted Pokémon. What? Where in the world did my partner go? By any chance, did Ditto... What? 
pretty sure your partner's fine, buddy. And he's apparently your twin, too. Sorry, I had a cold and was in bed for a while. Really? That's his excuse? Cough, cough. Thank you for finding out that a ditto was disguised as my partner. Take this as thanks. Hey, what the? 12,000? That is so much. Lately in Coney Coney, there are sightings of people who might actually be ditto. I'm investigating these cases. He found out my partner was actually ditto. It would be reassuring if I could get your help. Uh, sure, that actually sounds like a really cool mystery, so I am down. Of course, I'll reward you for your cooperation. I've heard that in Coney Coney, there's a seller who interacts with customers in a bizarre way. A ditto may be involved. Defeat or catch it. Either way, please report it to me. So he said a seller, right? I'm definitely going to keep an eye out because I guess this episode, I don't think we're going to quite get to Olivia's trial. So we might as well just explore Coney Coney City a little bit and maybe even find these Ditto 5. That would actually be really cool. Uh, she sells, she sells by the seashore. And actually, there's a shore right over here where I believe this old man wants to battle. I keep repeating fair battles with Pokemon. What kind of fisherman does... What? Okay, I literally blanked out as I was reading that. I don't know why, but let's just take this old man on and move on to Kony Kony. I don't even know why I actually came over here to battle him. I guess because there's an item nearby and... Oh, he's actually got a Chinchou. I love how these trainers actually all have different types of Pokeballs too. Like, I feel like in the old school games, even in Sun and Moon actually, uh, mostly everybody used Pokeballs. And this time around, I've noticed... Uh, Different trainers got different stuff, like I think the gentlemen's actually use Ultra Balls or even Luxury Balls maybe to show off their status, you know. And they love using full restores on their Pokemon even though they're like level 10 also just to show off a little bit, but uh, this guy's also got a Tentacool. Both Pokemon that Nani would have actually benefited a lot from taking down. I really want to trade Nani because I guess literally Cubone is just Cubone, but once it evolves it becomes a completely new Pokemon which I never got to use in Pokemon Sun, so I'm really excited for it. Alolan Marowak, that is. But yeah, there is an item over here, a Netball, actually, which I'm pretty sure is the Pokeball that guy was using on his Chinchou and stuff. Um, but I don't need these trainer tips, man. I don't know what it was saying, but we don't need him. Let's get this X Accuracy, which I also don't really need. I'm not a huge fan of X items, as you guys may know, but I am a fan of Tapu Lele. What the heck? The Ruins of Life. They say that's why Memorial Hill was built here long ago. Oh, as like a shrine to Tapu Lele, I guess? I don't know, dude. Let's go to my favorite city in this game. Or at least my favorite music from a city in this game. And that is Kony Kony City. Actually, taking a look at it, I feel like it kind of is my favorite. Maybe tied with Mali City. I really like Mali City's uh, architecture and design and stuff. But what is going on here? Got some shady business going down between Pokemon... I wonder if either of those are actually Ditto, even though the police officer did say they apparently like to disguise as humans instead. But oh my gosh, finally, finally, we have another clothes shop. And I love how they have those like, I guess, Oriental inspired clothing outside. But when you actually get in the shop, they have nothing like that. So I don't know why they have those. It would be kind of cool if you could dress up in like some traditional Japanese clothes, kind of like they gave Mario in Odyssey, actually. I'm pretty sure he's got a couple of those. But uh, anyway, We've got a necktie t-shirt, that's pretty cool. They got anything orange in here for us though? Because that's all I care about. Eh, probably not. Uh, we do have some shorts though, sporty shorts as well. Oh, there's some orange shorts. Those are actually kind of cool, but new sneakers. Yes, finally. I've been waiting for new sneakers for so long. And there's actually the orange ones that I think I wore in the original playthrough. But you know what? I think these are actually looking a little bit nicer. Is that Pikachu's tail down there too? Kind of fits because we definitely have Pikachu on our team. So yeah, I'm going to cop those real quick. And oh, it looks like we can get a new backpack as well. The default backpack's not that bad. Oh, a hat too. I don't even care what anybody says because we are stylish right now. Look at that. I actually really like those shoes. Maybe not the hat so much, but the shoes are dope. I'm liking it. And Rotom, please cheer up, buddy. I need to keep remembering to just tap Rotom every once in a while. Oh, he's actually got the Roto Lotto ready. I don't know what I'm doing in this building. I guess I'm literally just looking for that ditto person. So we got to literally talk to every single person in this city. And this is actually Olivia's shop. So I know she's the island kahuna and all, but she seems like such a normal person, you know? Wow, who would have thunk it that even celebrities such as the kahuna could be normal people, huh? No pass. Wait, are you saying I can't pass? Oh, there's a letter. 
Olivia here, this is Provo Pass. It watches the shop whenever I'm away. I know I asked you to meet me here, but there's been a change of plans. Come meet me at the Ruins of Life past Memorial Hill when you can. Okie dokie. Now he's going upstairs, so I feel like we've got to follow him. Oh wait, nope, he's coming back down. What have you got for us, little no pass? Pass? Gas? Medicine? What? Okay. You got a max potion. I don't know why, but that's very nice of you, Mr. Probo Pass. I enjoy it. It's actually kind of lame, though, that Olivia doesn't actually use Probo Pass in battle. I mean, I guess she does, kind of, later on, maybe. No spoilers, of course, but uh, is this Olivia's room? Oh, yeah, it is. I, re I remember now. She's got all these stuffles that are actually toys that can move. They're really popular among single women. But one of them, I believe, is a real stuffle. And hey, there it is. We can actually play with it, too. Just like we can play with pretty much any other Pokemon in this game. Which begs the question, why couldn't we have Pokemon following us? Like, literally every Pokemon has a model, you know, like outside and stuff. Or outside of battle, I mean, in the overworld. So, I don't know. I feel like it couldn't... Or I guess it probably is pretty hard considering you can get into little corners like this. I don't think a Pokemon would be able to follow us in there, but very cleverly hidden little totem sticker there. And I wonder if we can actually sleep on Olivia's bed too. Wow, what the? What is the point of this? It's a surprisingly firm mattress. You could sleep easy here, free from burdens. Too bad though, we've got too many burdens in our life. We've got to go take on Kahunas and Trials and uh, I guess the Pokemon Mafia, whatever that might be. But welcome to Olivia's Jewelry Shop. Oh, we can actually buy stuff here? What the? Oh yeah, I guess Looker did mention that he bought the Thunderstone here, but... Yeah, I kind of forgot that you could buy those in this game. That's kind of cool. But this lady here is a little more important. Only one per customer and that's set in stone. So what do you say? You gonna buy or nah? She has got all the fossils you could ever want. Except she actually doesn't have all of them. And I've just realized she only has the jaw fossil. And not the sail. So I guess these are Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon exclusives. So 7k... You know what? I think it'll be worth it because, of course, the jaw fossil is the one that becomes uh, Tyrant, as I mentioned, the rock and dragon fossil Pokemon of Kalos. Oh, she's actually telling us about it, the royal air Pokemon, which could crack anything with its tough, tough jaw. It's very precious, so be sure to take care of it. And yeah, like I said, in Pokemon Ultra Moon, that will actually be the Sail Fossil, which of course turns into Amora, the ice and rock type uh, Stegosaurus Pokemon. I just realized they're both dinosaurs. How did I not mention that, you know? Kahuna Olivia still doesn't have a boyfriend. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. Don't worry. I've been on a couple of dates with her. I mean, granted it was in an alternate universe, and I guess it still hasn't happened in this one, but whoa. Hello. Oh, I thought this lady would actually be a ditto, but... Oh, I just realized the Pikachu lady is gone. There was a lady all the way back here in the original Sun and Moon that would actually give you the special Zemu for Pikachu. Uh, but I guess they're completely gone now. Instead, here's Eviolite! And a really cool camera angle, actually. I don't know why, but... Why does our character just smile all the time? That's like still my number one complaint with uh, Ultra Sun and Moon is they didn't give the character any expressions. But hey, 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 don't tell me. Are you maybe a trial goer? Ooh, yes I am. She's got a favor to ask, of course. Everybody in this game's got favors. Aren't you just the sweetest? Thanks. No, thank you. I'm so glad. Wait, why? I'm a muy excelente hairstylist, you see. But I just came here to the Alola region. And I've heard this rumor that I just can't help wondering about. That's right. I've heard that there's a Pokemon in Alola that has beautiful curly hair, Hermosa. Oh, she's Hispanic, I guess. That's cool. I've got to see it, even just for a moment. And if I could, I'd love to touch its hair. I've been so distracted by my desire that I've been completely useless at work. But I don't even know what that Pokemon might be called. That's why I came up with this Henio plan. A trial goer like you must know tons about genius Pokemon. She did not say genius, but catch this beautifully bemain Pokemon for me and show me your Pokedex. I'll reward you, of course, so please do me a favor here. Wait, who is she talking about? I guess she said it's like a curly-haired Pokemon with luscious locks? I have no idea who she could actually be talking about, so maybe you guys could help me out with this one because... Yeah, I don't know, I just can't think of it for some reason, but uh, let's check out what's going on over here. Pretty amazing when you think about it, rock types have plenty of weaknesses. She's definitely something to be able to boast of such a strength even when she uses such a disadvantageous type. 
Yeah, I guess rock types do have a lot of weaknesses now that I think about it, actually. But Ditto. Oh, we found him right outside the Alola Photo Club, which I just realized back in the original Sun and Moon. Uh, that was actually just a pile of, like, logs, I guess. So kind of cool. I guess maybe they were planning on bringing the Alola Photo Club even back in the original Sun and Moon, but I guess they didn't for some reason. Uh, but it's here now, and I'm not going to use it anyway, so I don't know why I'm bringing it up. But let's suck up a little bit of HP from that ditto there, and oh, I probably should have hit it with Razor Leaf, because I think Darwin actually has a way better physical attack uh, than special attack, so Giga Drain, not quite as powerful. All I wanted was to get some HP back, though, and now this ditto is getting its own HP back. This is not good. Okay. Come on, let's hit the takedown. Oh no! Why are you faster than me now? What the heck? That barely did any recoil too. Like, what is going on, bro? Wow, we don't do any damage to this ditto. Oh my goodness, are we actually about... Oh, watch him flinch us too. That would be so sad. What? You really avoided us twice? Okay, I am done with you, bro. I'm bringing out the big guns here. It's time, Loba. I really hope he doesn't Giga Drain, by the way. Or Razor Leaf, I guess that would be pretty bad too. Oh my gosh, of course! You go for Giga Drain. Why wouldn't you go for Giga Drain? It's the perfect timing. But who cares because I'm pretty sure one Fire Fang will... What? Are you kidding me? Alright, at least he missed two. But please, there we go. Finally we hit it. And yeah, Ditto will finally go down. I don't know why that was so much tougher than it needed to be, but... I'm loving this battle background though. You don't get to have too many battles out here in Kony Kony, but whoa! Stealth Rock? Does Rockruff always learn Stealth Rock, or is this maybe something that only this Rockruff is learning? I don't know, but I barely ever use Thrash, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it because Stealth Rock is actually really, really good, if you guys don't know. Kind of one of the most OP moves out there, at least in competitive battling, and especially back in the day, but it's still really popular, and what the heck? Hey, sorry for being away for a while. I was picking some herbs with Captain Mallow. Oh my gosh, you and Mallow? Don't make me jealous. I guess we still have Kahuna Olivia though. She seems to be more into us anyway, but uh, yeah. I guess we've got to report back to that policeman now because doesn't seem like, or at least we don't have a hint as to where the next Ditto person might be. So I'm guessing we got to go talk to him and then he'll tell us about the next Ditto impersonator. But first, let's go to Captain Lana's house. Should I risk a broken heart or should I not and live in uncertainty? Wait, what? W what's this? Could it be? The Z Power Ring glistening on your arm. That must mean you can use Z moves, am I right? Ah, this is destiny, a gift from the heavens. What is this man talking about? You've got to help me with your full power. Uh, okay, are you trying to battle? There's someone I like, you see. I'm too afraid to confess my feelings for her. I don't have the courage, but I feel like if I see a Z move, it would inspire me to go all out myself. Please, you've got to help me find true love and happiness. <laughs> all right, sure, dude, I've got you. Fantastic, don't hold back. Show me those Z moves to your heart's content. Oh, nice. We got another new event here in Kony Kony. I actually really like how many side quests they've added in these games. I mean, I guess some of them are pretty simple, but it's still really cool. Like, it really shows where those 200 plus uh, hours or whatever of extra dialogue went into. I don't think it was actually 200 hours, but I remember seeing uh, like a report before the games came out that they added like so much more new dialogue to the games. And I kind of always suspected it was going to end up being just side quests. And it turns out I was right, but oh no! Darwin is going to get scalded to death, which is very, very sad. A critical hit too. And I've just noticed this is actually Clam Pearl. It is literally a pearl in, in a show. So, wait, is this guy planning on like proposing or something? Because I guess you could literally use a Clam Pearl to propose. Or at least that's totally what I would do if I was in the Pokemon world. I want to see you and your Pokemon go all out. Oh wait, he wanted us to sh uh, He wanted to see a Z-move. How the heck did I forget that so easily? What? No, I have to wait till tomorrow now? You gotta be kidding me. I just went through all the work of healing our Pokemon and put the Grazium Z on a uh -huh, Leafeon. And I guess the man's just isn't ready for another battle, but... I'm surprised there's nothing else on that ship. There is a totem sticker, of course, but I'm not grabbing those just yet, as you guys know. But I think that's actually going to be the end of this episode. So next time, we will head off to Memorial Hill and take on Kahuna Olivia in her grand trial. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you all in the next episode. <laughs>